Last time we've looked at the first four apps in the Pixel Boy. We looked at the journal, the calendar, yearbook and the study plan. And today I just released to the server the new, the fifth, the drawing app. Welcome to Pixel Art Academy 101. This is my YouTube show about my video game called Pixel Art Academy. I am Matej Jan, also known as Retro on the internet. If you're new here, Pixel Art Academy is an adventure game. So in this game, the point is for you to actually learn how to draw. It's still heavy in development. It's in early access right now. You can pre-order it or you can get the alpha access if you want to play the development version right now. It's $20 extra. Uh, so it's basically just if you really want to support this project. So instead of one big release, I just put out small little contents and each time I put something new for the alpha players, uh, you're going to see one of these episodes. So today we are looking at the drawing app and the first thing when you open it up, you see a portfolio. In the portfolio, you will be able to see your artworks and projects you're going to work on. So whatever kind of things you need to draw in the game, you will be able to upload. You have the pencils, there's the palette and the sprite in the middle with which you're drawing. I like this kind of just very tactile user interface. This is nothing new. It's called skeuomorphic design. It's when one thing mimics the visuals and behavior of something else. So for example, when we first got computers, if you wanted to delete a file, you just have to type in rm and the name of the file. You gotta know that command. And even later when we got graphical user interfaces like in the Xerox example. In 1981, Xerox introduced the STAR office information system. Using the move key, you can arrange your desktop in any way you like. You would select a file and there would be a key you press to delete. That was kind of the command you were given it. And it was only later when Apple took the technology that they were developing at Xerox and put it in their computer, Lisa, they put a waste basket into the user interface and you would just grab a document and drag and drop it into the waste basket to delete it. There's no real baskets in the computer, it just doesn't exist. But the interaction, you understand what it is to grab a piece of paper and throw it in the trash, right? And so when Apple's next computer came out, the Macintosh in 1984, it continued this trend, except instead of the waste basket, it was now called trash, and it had an icon designed by the legendary Susan Kerr. If you're an artist and, and you're skilled with media, this is a new medium. There's a thousand little dots in half an inch and you have the capacity either real or magnified to turn off and on each one of those dots. She drew many other icons as well for the Macintosh. In particular, what I want to talk about is Mac Paint, which was a drawing software for the Mac. She came up with all of the icons for brushes and the lasso tool and the paint bucket. Like a lot of times she had to come up with this kind of metaphors for how the color field works and she tried like a paint roller and then it made way more sense when it was a paint bucket because you could pour the color and then it spills all over and that actually makes sense because if you miss a pixel in the outline it'll spill out over and fill everything else and her work really is iconic so next time you open up photoshop and look at the toolbar know where it came from that's susan Kerr's work they're still kind of kicking around you, you know <laughs> a few more dots but same basic idea if you ever study art history you know nothing really is new and a lot of the ui in the macintosh was kind of trying to mimic this kind of stuff from real life and when you really go all the way you know one thing is having the icons for a pencil and an eraser and another thing is you just having the pencil right there in the ui that's how i decided to do the drawing app for the pixel art academy so it's full on skeuomorphic i would even say it's even more than skeuomorphic this is what i like to call immersive ui because you are just there in the place and games are great for this and it's not actually something new that i came up with a lot of games in the 90s worked in this metaphor nowadays games have like a menu and maybe there's some background graphics for it but that's it back then instead of 
of a menu, like you would actually get a person holding a folder or a clipboard and there's, if you wanted to go to different locations, there would be just like different places of the building that you would go into. And it was really great, I love it, it was so much fun. Ah, uh, yeah, so anyway, in uh, Pixel Art Academy, you're all gonna go full skeuomorphic. Everything's as immersive as you can. You get your account folder, it's gonna be a real folder. When you connect your account with Twitter, you're gonna get a stamp in it, stuff like that. And I understand it's not like the most efficient user interface. So there are actually going to be different teams. So this one right now looks like a kind of like a school desktop whatever you have these cheap watercolors and stuff like that but everything is just like a skin over the drawing tools that i have all of the tools you're using are actually the same as i use in my editor that i'm using to make graphics for some parts of the game like the characters eventually you will also have these kind of options to switch to a more professional view but uh yeah, so far when you're starting out, I just want it to be like real life. That's the whole point of skeuomorphism. It tries to capitalize on the fact that you already know how to use a pencil. And you know what happens if you spill paint on the... No, that doesn't really work like that, but you get the idea. So anyway, right now in the drawing app, there's no artworks and projects yet that's gonna come up in the next update. But what you do have is the challenges and inside you're gonna find a tutorial. So instead of throwing all of these tools of the editor on the table at once, I'm gonna introduce them to you one by one. This is great for people that haven't used a drawing software before. And it's kind of like, you know, how Mario level one is designed in such a way that you really have to learn everything before the game lets you go on. Like here as well, first of all, you learn the pencil. Next one, you learn the eraser. All you can do in that challenge is erase dots out of the square that's already filled in. Next one, it's the bucket fill, the same thing. And now next one, you have the two tools you learned before. So the only way you can solve that challenge is by using the bucket fill first and then erasing. It goes that way all the way to the end. For example, when you're learning shortcuts, all the tools just disappeared. So you gotta use your keyboard to switch between tools. And once you've done with the basics, there's also the colors tutorial and the helpers tutorial. And I just want to mention the references one because it has this little tribute to Susan Kerr. And it's actually using one of her drawings from 1982 as the reference that you draw in this tutorial. You go to your references tray, you grab it down and then fill it in because that's how in those days before they had editors they would just draw on graph paper and then sometimes they would just type stuff in by numbers and then later on when mac paint was written she would just use mac paint to design icons and artwork for everything else if you have alpha access you can go try this tutorial right now otherwise you'll have to just wait a little bit longer until everything else in chapter one, also known as Admission Week, is finished. If you want to follow the development, I'm on Twitter at Pixel Art Academy. There is a blog on Patreon where I post every few days and it's all public, so you can just go click follow. Of course, if you want to support this project, you can also donate. And all of the stuff that you're supporting through Patreon actually gets added to your in-game balance. So eventually, when the game comes out, you can just buy it with the money that you put into the project through Patreon, so that's a cool thing. All right, that's it, that's all. I will see you in the next update when I have something new for you. Bye-bye.